You feel strange. Your entire body's itching, and you can't move your arms and legs. What on earth happened while you were snoozing? Okay, don't panic just yet, it must be just a bad dream. You open your eyes and look around cautiously. The next moment, you're internally screaming in horror. You don't see familiar colors. It feels as if you're in a club under bright neon lights. Everything around is blue or green or violet. You can't distinguish the red poppies which, and you're pretty sure about this, decorate your wallpaper. Time to admit it, you see the world in the UV spectrum, and blue, violet, and purple colors seem the most alluring to you. Then you suddenly realize that everything around is big, really big. Your pillow looks like a small Everest, and the ceiling seems to be miles away. No wonder it freaks you out. You're about the size of a paperclip. Even worse, your head wouldn't move far enough for you to examine your body. You decide it's time to crack the mystery of your altered vision and teeny size. All you need to do is get to the mirror. You try to sit up in your bed. Uh, no such luck. Your limbs wouldn't respond to your brain's orders. All of a sudden, your body starts to behave as if on its own. Something moves behind your back, and you find yourself hovering in the air. Uh-oh, you have a foreboding you won't like what you're about to see in the mirror. You fly, and just how insane does that sound, closer to the mirror. Another internal shriek. Your body is rather slender and furry. You can't figure out its color, but you see enough to understand it's kind of striped. You look at your four wings, the front ones much larger than the hind ones. You move your six tiny legs. Well, there's no use denying the obvious. You're a honeybee. That would explain the way you perceive colors. Seeing the world in UV allows bees to spot landing strips. Those guide the insects to the nectar they gather. Now, you have another problem at hand. You need to figure out what type of bee you are. Are you the queen? A drone? A worker? Huh? Gotta be cool. You don't see any other bees. That would be the queen's attendants following her around all day, feeding and cleaning. Plus, you woke up outside the hive, and the queen hardly ever leaves it. If she does, it's either to mate, which happens in the first two or three weeks of her life and never repeats, or to leave the hive that's become overcrowded. In this case, the worker bees stop feeding the queen to slim her down. Otherwise, she won't be able to fly. So, you aren't the queen. Maybe it's for the better. Despite the title, such bees don't manage the hive or order work bees around. Her main function is to lay eggs, and boy, is she good at that! The queen can lay up to 2,000 eggs a day. It's around one egg every 43 seconds. <laughs> Busy as a bee? Hmm, well, maybe you're a drone bee. Those are male bees that only live in the spring and summer and have a bad reputation. They're rumored to be fat, lazy, and hungry. They don't make honey, but they love to munch on it. They don't protect the queen or the hive, but they need protection. They don't clean the place or build anything. They don't even have a stinger. The only task is to mate with the queen and spread healthy genes. Ah, but that's pretty important. It doesn't look as if you're a drone bee, though. They have large eyes and a wide body. Your eyes are medium-sized, and you have a tiny waist. It means you're a worker bee. But which one? A house bee, a nurse, a builder, a cleaner, a queen attendant, an undertaker? Or maybe you're a guard or a forager. No matter what, you better behave. You're right in the middle of your musings when a heavenly aroma hits you. Ooh, what can smell that awesome? The window is closed, but you manage to squeeze through a narrow crack. Ah, freedom! Hey, that's the source of the smell, lavender flowers. You come closer and land on one of them. Pollen grains begin to stick to your furry legs. Sometime later, all the pollen you've gathered is securely packed in pollen baskets on your hind legs. Long hairs covering them help to hold it in place while you're flying. Ow, but this load's heavy. Well, a bee can carry half its body weight in these saddlebags. Suddenly, you hear some buzzing and spot another bee on the flower next to you. To your confusion, the bee also notices you and starts to dance. Hey, what's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. Yet the most horrifying thing is that your body is answering it with a dance of its own. 
Too bad you're still awful at this bee language and can't figure out what all the swaying and waggling means. After flying and gathering pollen for what feels like hours, you feel exhausted. You've been working a lot, having flown almost six miles, sometimes at a speed of 15 miles per hour. You're so tired that your little wings can't move anymore, and you fall down on the sidewalk. Great. You'll just have a rest for a... Oh, suddenly you feel the ground starts vibrating. In a moment, a huge shadow covers the sun. Is it? It's someone's foot. At least you can say you've lived a good life. But wait, the foot stops, and then it moves away. Whew! You decide to rest there for a while, and then go on hunting for food. Oh no, the ground's shaking again. The feet are returning. You feel some mysterious force lifting you off the ground. And then the most delicious smell hits your antenna. Water mixed with sugar. This human knows the trick. You hungrily gulp down this ambrosia and almost instantly feel as fresh as a cucumber. Your wings start fluttering and you rise into the air. Thank you, kind human, but it's time for you to fly to your work. But just as you start gaining speed, you feel something huge hit you and then darkness. Ow, why does your body hurt so much? Oh, barnacles, you're a bee. You open your eyes and look at your legs and arms Wiggle your fingers and toes? So, it's been just a dream. <laughs> what a relief. Only, why are you lying on the ground near the road rather than in your cozy bed?